Hello everybody, we have huge updates today on the second stimulus checks and the second stimulus package. Leaders in Congress plan to approve stimulus checks by next week and they voted on a bill today to extend the deadline for a stimulus deal. Let's discuss the details in this video. We'll also cover the unemployment extension, stimulus for those on social security, and a quick update on today's front page news. The media is slamming Trump for not pre-ordering enough vaccines which may put us in a shortage to start the new year. Do you think Trump has handled the pandemic well? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Welcome back to my channel. My name's Andrew and thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. Don't forget to like this video if you like this content and subscribe. I'll be posting updates almost daily. Okay, we're going to discuss the plans for stimulus checks in just two minutes, but first we're going to cover a quick update on front page news. I'd also like to thank my sponsor, Weeble. They are one of the fastest growing and most trusted stock brokerages in the world. And in a time when we all need money more than ever, they have partnered with me to provide two free stocks for my viewers. It's completely free. And all you need to do is open an account using my link. The link is in my description of this video. You are free to sell the stocks and use the money immediately or hold on to the stocks and start building your wealth. Just make sure to complete the process of opening your account fully to get the two free stocks. Okay, let's jump into a quick overview of front page news and then we'll get right into stimulus. And as always, I try to be unbiased on this channel, so I try and show you both Fox News and CNN so you can see what both sides are saying. Front page CNN, Facebook must be broken up, the US government says in a groundbreaking lawsuit. Dozens of states and the federal government have sued Facebook, saying they are essentially a monopoly in the digital marketplace and have engaged in anti-competitive behavior. They are essentially saying that Facebook must sell Instagram, WhatsApp, and potentially other products that they own in order to not be a monopoly in the space. Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you think Facebook has become too big to the point where it's a problem? Or do you think the government should allow Facebook to do what they're doing? Facebook's grudge here is that years ago, they approved the purchase of both WhatsApp and Instagram, and now the government is trying to retroactively deny them that right. These lawsuits have been years in the making. Facebook has seen them coming and they have been preparing. One of the main things they're doing to prepare for this is they are integrating the technology side of these apps to make them hard to separate. So they are basically trying to integrate Instagram, WhatsApp, and all of these other apps into Facebook from a technical standpoint and tell them and tell them in court, hey, these have essentially become one giant platform. Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook, they're all technologically intermingled and it would be very hard to separate and very hard to say that they are actually different entities because they are implementing them. For example, a lot of you might have seen that recently Facebook created a system where you can message someone from Instagram to Facebook and from Facebook to Instagram. That is just one example of how they're trying to integrate these applications to prevent the government from separating them. Okay guys, let's take a look at what Fox News is saying and then we'll get right into stimulus. Front page on Fox News, Hunter Biden's tax affairs are under federal investigation. Fox News continues to slam the Biden family, saying that they have engaged in tax evasion and they should be thrown in court or even in jail. Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you agree with Fox News pushing this narrative that Hunter Biden and potentially more of Biden's family have engaged in tax evasion? In any case, it is true that the U.S. Attorney's Office is investigating Hunter Biden's tax affairs and Joe Biden's son has confirmed this. He said this week that he is taking the matter very seriously, but he is confident that he handled his legal affairs appropriately. Now, these investigations center around the fact that some have alleged that Hunter Biden has engaged in certain forms of tax evasion in other countries. Now, you all know there is a thin line between using the legal tax code to avoid taxes and crossing that line and doing something that is illegal. Now, Fox News and Republicans have slammed the Biden family for years about this. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below, guys. Do you agree with Fox News kind of pushing this narrative? Or do you think there is no merit to this? As of now, there is no actual proof of tax evasion, but there is an investigation going on. So we will have updates daily. Okay, let's jump right into a quick update on COVID, and then we'll get right into stimulus. Canada just approved the Pfizer vaccine and is expected to begin vaccinating its people next week, guys. 
So this means the UK and Canada are now both ahead of the US as far as distributing the vaccine. Let me know in the comments below, will you get the vaccine once it's released or are you feeling apprehensive? I know a lot of people are gonna wait and see how safe these vaccines turn out to be. And the good news is that these other countries that are approving it first will give us a little bit of insight into how safe these vaccines are. Now, speaking of which, the UK announced that a few people who got the vaccine had a severe allergic reaction, guys. So they are suggesting that if you have a history of severe allergies, that you should not get this Pfizer vaccine. It is unclear how severe these reactions were for these two people in the UK, but they will continue to monitor this. And for now, it is being recommended that if you have a history of severe allergies, to just not get the Pfizer vaccine until more data is available. Okay, let's jump right into stimulus. Where negotiations stand today and when we'll most likely get our stimulus checks. We are down to two bills that could potentially be approved. Now, as you know, last week we had a bipartisan proposal that had both Democrats and Republicans support, but McConnell would not support it. This week, the White House has proposed a bill that McConnell has supported. So just to clarify, we have one bill that Pelosi supports and one bill that McConnell supports, both of which have a very similar cost. They are both about $900 billion, okay? So the great news here is that we are very close to a top-line cost of the bill, which has been one of the biggest hurdles for the stimulus package for months. Now let's take a look at the details, what they are currently disagreeing on, and what it's going to take to get a deal, and when we'll most likely get our stimulus checks. Well, the bad news with Mitch McConnell's new package is that it does not include an unemployment boost. Now, let me clarify. It includes an unemployment extension of the regular unemployment benefits, as well as the CARES Act benefits, which provided unemployment to those who are self-employed, gig workers, contract workers, and part-time workers. Those who normally would not qualify for unemployment will still qualify for this extension, but there is no boost. There is no $300 or $600 weekly boost for those on unemployment. Now that is the worst thing about this new bill. The great news is it does include stimulus checks. And as you all know, we have all been waiting for these checks. Now these stimulus checks would be $600, which is a lot less than the first round of stimulus checks. But obviously at this point, something is better than nothing. And Biden has promised that when he is inaugurated, he will approve an even larger stimulus package and is saying that this would just be a down payment. So what is Pelosi saying about the White House and Mitch McConnell's proposal? Well, she said, the president's proposal must not be allowed to obstruct the bipartisan congressional talks that are underway. The bipartisan talks are the best hope for a bipartisan solution. She also said, while it is progress that Leader McConnell has signed off on a $916 billion offer based on the bipartisan framework, the president's proposal, which cuts unemployment insurance by $140 billion compared to the framework, is unacceptable. Pelosi is saying that it is unacceptable to not include an unemployment boost. So that is where things stand today. Pelosi will not approve this package unless they include an unemployment boost. So some experts have proposed, hey, let's put back in the unemployment boost and let's remove some of the money for state and local governments. Now, let me know, guys, do you like that idea? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. This would essentially remove the funding from state and local governments who have been struggling throughout this pandemic. And this seems to be a red line that Pelosi has drawn, and she will not approve a bill without this state and local government funding included. Now, here's the dark side of not including it, guys. Experts think that if you don't include money for state and local governments, that eventually states will just raise your taxes in order to pay for those deficits. Now, this is one reason why Republicans don't want to include more stimulus, because the more debt that your government takes on, the more they will ta tax you. So we're kind of in a difficult position where Mitch McConnell does not want to provide more stimulus for state and local governments, because then the federal government will have more debts, and McConnell thinks that eventually the federal government will have to then raise your taxes in order to pay back that debt. And as you know, Republicans do not like raising taxes, right? On the flip side, if state and local governments do not receive the stimulus funding, then they will eventually have to raise taxes as well just to make that money back from the deficits that were created during the pandemic. So you can kind of see where both sides are coming from on this, right? But in any case, some people say, hey, for now, 
for this package, take the funding out for states and just give people the unemployment boost and the stimulus checks. Now, just to recap, the offer from the White House, which has Mitch McConnell's support, includes a $600 stimulus check, which is expected to go to the same people who received the first stimulus check. It also includes $600 in extra stimulus checks for every child dependent that you have. It includes PPP money for businesses. It includes money for state and local governments. It also includes an eviction freeze, a freeze on student loans, as well as rental assistance for those who have not been able to pay their rents. It does not include the boost that Biden wants to include for those on Social Security. Now, as you've probably heard, Biden wants to include a $200 per month stimulus payment for those who are on Social Security benefits. Now, Biden has promised that once he is inaugurated, he will include this in his larger stimulus package, but currently it will not be included in these proposals now. But a lot of these negotiations will come down to Biden and whether or not he will be able to get Pelosi and McConnell to compromise on a deal. There is a lot of rumors that Biden has already convinced Pelosi to come down. You know that Pelosi originally wanted to spend 2.2 trillion and she has already come down to less than 1 trillion. Mitch McConnell, as recently as two days ago, was only supporting a $500 billion bill and has just gone up to 900 billion as well. A lot of people are saying that Biden is behind the scenes encouraging these compromises and facilitating these negotiations. But will he be able to bridge the gap and bring them even closer to include this unemployment boost, which is what Pelosi is hinging on now? We'll have to wait and see, guys, but we will have updates daily. As of now, Congress has voted on a bill to extend government funding by one week, which leads us to December 18th for a new deadline to get a spending bill approved to avoid a government shutdown. And that gives us one more week to approve a stimulus package. This, in a sense, is good news because lawmakers want to include the stimulus package in the spending bill, which means we have more hope of getting these checks before Christmas and having a package approved before the new year. That being said, they will still need to compromise not only on the stimulus package, but also on the spending bill. So as much as that gives us hope, there is a lot more pressure to get both things done at once. We'll have to wait and see what happens, guys, but we will have updates daily. So just to recap, what is standing between us and a stimulus deal? It's the unemployment boost. Pelosi wants it. McConnell does not want to include it. Money for state and local governments. McConnell has agreed to include them, but Pelosi wants even more funding for states and liability protections for businesses. McConnell wants to include protections for businesses so they cannot be sued by customers or employees during this pandemic if they get sick. Pelosi has been hesitant to include that, but it is said if McConnell includes state funding and an unemployment boost, that, that Pelosi would be willing to compromise and include this in a bill. We should have big updates daily. Okay, let's also do a quick update on the unemployment benefits that could be included in this package. So let's clarify where we are today. Now, most people's unemployment benefits will run out either after Christmas or at the end of January. The bipartisan proposal would not only extend these state benefits, it would also extend them for those who usually do not qualify, just like the CARES Act did. Those who are self-employed, those who are gig workers, those who are even part-time workers would qualify. It would also include a $300 per week unemployment boost for 18 weeks above the state benefits. Now, the, the main difference here is that McConnell's proposal would not include that boost. Okay, so it would extend the normal state benefits, as well as extend it for those who usually do not qualify for unemployment, but it just would not add that extra $300 per week unemployment boost. Let's take a look at whether or not this is enough for most people to survive. On your screen, you'll see a list of states and the maximum weekly unemployment benefit that is allowed in that state. For example, Alabama, the most you can get weekly is $275, in Arizona, $240, and California, $450 weekly. Now this is the maximum. On average, most people receive about $300 weekly. So if you do the math, obviously that's $1,200 a month. And that is simply not enough for someone to survive on, guys. And those on unemployment have been the hardest hit throughout this crisis. And they deserve an unemployment boost, guys. 
So guys, let me know in the comments if you agree. And if you're on unemployment, stay strong out there. Help is coming soon. And if you made it this far into my video, thank you so much for supporting my channel. It really means the world to me and I really do appreciate every single view. My thoughts go out to each and every one of you during this hardship. I've had so many comments from people who truly deserve the help. And if you're watching this video, you're probably going through a difficult season in your life. Just know that you will get through this and you will be in a better place. Stay strong out there and keep taking steps towards a better tomorrow. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.